All right, so today I'm gonna be working on the STI engine again, the Type R long block. And we finally got the seals in and we already went ahead and tapped them all in. For some reason, I only had one. So these are different brand, doesn't matter, same thing. So got them all on now. And I think now all we, we gotta just go ahead and put the back timing covers on. And then we can put the cam gears on, tie and belt and all that. So we're gonna get into it. All right, so as you can see, we got the uh, back timing covers on and we also got the new um, timing belt pulleys as well. Is this one. Um, they're just like hand tight on there right now. I haven't torqued them down yet. I also got to get the, uh, the tensioner on and put the cam gears on as well. And then I'll show you guys how to put the cam gears on. So we're gonna go ahead and do the left-hand side intake cam first. And basically Subaru made it so this cam is slightly longer or it sticks out. I think they're the same length, but it sticks out more out of the head than this side. So basically what that does is make it so this cam gear can only go on this or else it won't. Like if I tried to put this on this one, it wouldn't lock in the little pin there and it would just spin around. So as you can see, it's slightly longer sticking out. This one's slightly deeper and when you put it on, it just slides right on like that. You kind of just spin it then feel it lock in, goes through the pin. As you can see, you can't spin it anymore. Just spins with the cam now, just like that. Now it's on the valve springs, you can't spin it anymore. So that's how you know it's on. Go ahead, take your bolt, put it in. And I believe they torque to 75 foot pounds, but I gotta check on that. And it also, I marked them top left, so I know, but it's, marked as well on the actual gear intake left hand side so it makes it pretty easy to figure out where everything goes so I'm gonna go ahead and put all the cam gears on now torque them all down and then go from there all right so just went ahead got all the cam bolts or cam gear bolts um, torqued down and I used the old timing belt to basically hold it in place as I use the torque wrench to uh, torque it and now what I gotta do is put these little caps on. They go on each uh, cam gear and screw those in, tighten them down. Is there no more soap? All right, got the little cam gear caps on, got them all torqued down and got all the pulleys torqued down as well. Tensioner is on and uh, I believe we can put the timing belt on now. I'm just gonna double check everything, make sure and then go ahead show you guys how to line up these marks for the cams this one's already lined up and uh just a little fact um so when you line up this mark most times when you're doing the timing belt on a car you get to line up the mark and that's because it's that puts the cylinder number one at top dead center subaru does it differently where this mark actually is not top dead center i believe um it's actually when all the pistons are about like halfway down on their stroke um, it's kind of funny they do it that way. Not sure why they do it that way, but that's how they do it. You gotta line up this mark. It's lined up down here, got a little line there, and then you gotta line it up with the oil pump mark right right there. Um, and that basically puts the, all the pistons are halfway down. They're not, one's not at top dead center like most cars. They're, always, they're like halfway down on their stroke. So, something you know. All right, so to line up the cams, it's pretty simple. So for the top cam, a little notch right there on the back timing cover, line up with the notch on the cam right here. You can see, you gotta adjust it a little bit probably to the right, but it's super easy to spin this side. This side is gonna be, when you line it up, it's gonna be on the like the, where the cam lobe hits on the spring. So it's gonna be stiff to turn. It's gonna be annoying to line this side up, but this side, you can just move it with your hand. So as you can see, then you gotta line up these two notches down here. You gotta line up basically these two cams with each other. Um, with these two lines, just like that. And then you gotta go ahead and check this notch and make sure it lines up with the notch on the back time and cover as well. So you gotta go ahead and do that to both sides. Once you do that, uh, just double check everything and then you can put the time belt on. 
And so for putting the um, timing belt on, so basically you want to make sure that these words are facing you. So basically put it on like that. That's because it has marks on it that should line up with the timing marks on the cam and the crank. So you can see, if you spin it, uh, it's got different marks. They should all line up with the marks on the cams and the crank. That way you know it's all timed the way it should be. And it's all on the right teeth. Alright, so as you can see, we got the timing belt on and we got the letters facing us and everything lined up. So timing belt has its own mark that you line up. The dotted one you line up with the crank gear. You line up the notches. As you can see, they line up and then it lines up with the uh, marking on the oil pump. And then the cams got the line right here, the mark on the cam gear with the line from the timing belt, it lines up and then it lines up with this mark right here. Then the two cams line up down here, you gotta line up the double notch, got that lined up. And then this marking lines up with the timing belt and then that little notch there. So that side's all set. As you can see on this side, same thing. Got the double notches lined up. Then we got the notch on the top lined up with the timing belt, lined up with that notch, and finally this side got the marking lined up with the timing belt and lined up with the notch on the back of the timing cover. So finally got it all set. You can just pull this little pin here and it will release the tensioner, put tension on the belt, just like that. It kind of just slides right out. It's not much force since the timing belt's brand new. It's not much stretch, so it doesn't do much right now. But um now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna spin this over two times, make sure there's no valve to piston contact. That way I know it's like timed or like, let's say it was off a tooth or something. It's not gonna hit the valve on the piston. I'm not gonna ruin the whole engine. So always spin this over like once or twice before you put it up back together and start the car. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, spin this over probably like twice spin the crank gear over twice which should spin the cam gear once around just like this once and then twice and then line up that mark back up with there and you will see so one thing you'll see is that belt doesn't line up anymore that's okay it's not going to um, that's just for like when you first put it on i just spun over the crank twice just to make sure there's uh, nothing getting bound up, no valve to piston contact, and it's spin mint, spin freely, so that's good. And uh, now we can probably go ahead. I'm gonna make sure, torque everything down again, make sure everything's good, and then put the timing covers on. All right, so I just went ahead, double checked the torque on everything, torqued all the tensioners, made sure they're all good, and I uh, also went ahead and put the little uh, guide, I believe it's called, I don't know, the guide for the crankshaft gear. Went ahead and put that on as well. And I always put a little Loctite on all the bolts just so you guys know, um, probably a good idea because you don't want one of those bolts coming out, blowing your engine up or ruining your valves. So just double check the timing one more time, make sure everything's lined up and it is. So looks like we're good to go and uh, put the timing covers on. All right, so as you can see, got the timing covers on and now we're gonna go ahead, throw the crankshaft pulley on and it's pretty easy to do. It's got the little keyway that lines up with the crank keyway. Put it on, tighten the bolt up, and it'll be all set. All right, so we got the crankshaft pulley on now. We got it tightened down, and it's finally time to uh, place the old block with the new one and uh, put it up on the crane. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the clutch on now. So I can't put the clutch on when it's on the end of the stand. Uh, I'm gonna put the clutch on when it is on the crane. So I'm gonna lower this one down and then attach the crane to that. All right, so as you can see, got the engine off the stand now, got the old block on the ground, and now we can go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and throw on the clutch now, the flywheel on the clutch. So it's right here, got the resurfaced flywheel, and we're gonna just hit the pilot bearing in, which is, here you're just gonna knock that into there and then go ahead bolt this onto the engine and then go ahead bolt the pressure plate and the friction disc onto the flywheel all right as you can see got the pilot bearing pushed in there now and we're gonna
gonna go ahead and throw the flywheel onto the engine. All right, so now you can see we've got these all torqued down to 55 foot-pounds, and uh, now we use the clutch alignment tool that comes with the clutch kit. Go ahead, put in there, then we can put the fl friction plate on and the pressure plate. All right, so you just use the alignment tool, push the friction plate on, and it should say, yeah, right here, it says transmission side, so obviously that faces out and the other side faces towards the engine. All right, so we went ahead, got the pressure plate torqued down, and we also went ahead and rolled the STI into the shop. So it's finally back in here and it's ready to get the engine back in. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video of putting the timing belt on and the clutch and a few other things. Um, next video, we're gonna be going ahead and throwing the engine back in the car. So stay tuned for that. Peace.